Hello, everyone. We're back. Welcome to Fall 2023. I'm pleased to have Beth Landy with us today, who's going to talk about scholarship opportunities for Lane College students. So, Beth, take it away. Right. Hi, everyone. Yeah, I'm Beth Landy. I'm a longtime uh, career counselor and faculty member at Lane. My current role is I work in our scholarship and employment services office. Our, our tagline is show me the money because <laughs> we're all about helping students find money to pay for college, whether that's through scholarships, which is free money or finding jobs. Um, and believe it or not, I know it's fall of 2023, but it's actually time to start thinking about applying for scholarships for the next academic year. So if you will still be a college student at Lane or elsewhere, starting in fall of 2024, we're actually gearing up to help students with those scholarship applications. Um, in just a moment, I'll show you our website where you can search for um, scholarships you might be able to apply for right now and maybe get the money sooner rather than later. But really, scholarship season for fall of 2024 is right around the corner. And I want to say right up front before I show you show you our website and give you some details, if you're thinking to yourself, thanks a lot, Beth, but I really don't think I'm scholarship material. Who would want to invest money in me? I need to tell you right up front, you don't have to be a 3.8 student <laughs> and the valedictorian of your high school class to get a scholarship. I've been doing this work for 25 years. Scholarships are given to students who are real human beings, who have real life unique stories to tell about their where they've been, where they are now, and where they're going. They're given to students who have overcome obstacles in their lives, who have um, persisted despite their challenges and are committed to their goals who have maybe gotten off track at some point in their life, but they're back in school and getting their lives back on track, who are committed to their families and their communities and are willing to do the hard work to be successful. So every student I have ever met at Lane Community College has a unique, compelling story that's worthy to tell scholarship committees. And Tina Hunter and I, who's my coworker in this office, will help you tell that story and make those scholarship applications as strong as possible. Rick, I don't know if you want to jump in at this point. I can keep going, but anything you want to say based on kind of my little... No, intro? no, uh, this is incredibly helpful. I mean, I've had a few students talk to me and they really are negative about applying for scholarships in part because they don't have a 4.0 or they feel, you know, because of their economics uh, status that they don't qualify for a Pell Grant, they make they make too much money or what have you, and they're not eligible for anything else. And people just kind of operate under these assumptions and carry on. It's yeah. it's great that you're here to dispel these things yeah. and set and people I'm straight. And I'm glad you brought up the Pell Grant and the things you get through filling out the FAFSA. This is not Pell Grants and Oregon Opportunity Grants. This is scholarships. These are, this is not about the government helping you with free money. This is private organizations and employers and donors who want to support students uh, to be successful in college. So with that as my intro, I think I'll share my screen. Rick, you will tell me if everybody can see this. And I, went, and I went to our scholarship website and, and everybody Rick can send you that link. It's pretty simple. It's lanecc.edu slash scholarships. Um, right up front, I will show you that we will start doing workshops, scholarship workshops on November 1st. I will open this up so you can see the whole term. And why we start these scholarship workshops, there are both in-person options and online Zoom options, is because uh, one of the main scholarship applications we want students to be thinking about for next year opens on November 1st. Um, scholarship season is typically January through March, again, for getting money for the next academic year. So Tina and I will spend November, December, winter break, January, February, March, 
doing workshops and helping students in our office. And certainly, especially for all of you students online, uh, we'll do Zoom appointments if you want us to connect with you and help look at your applications or help review some of the personal statements you have to write. We work with online students all the time to make sure they're getting their applications together. So I want you to see that we will have in-person and Zoom workshops all through the month of November and into finals week. And then over winter break and into January and February, our workshops kind of transition. They're not kind of introductory scholarship workshops, but they're hands-on workshops in computer labs. So if you can get yourself to campus, we will actually help you in computer labs start and complete your applications. We bring writing tutors in to help you with personal statements and essays. Um, we kind of live and breathe scholarships between now and those early March and April deadlines. So let me show you the next part of our website. This is probably the most important, literally a step-by-step -step walkthrough of everything you should be doing if you're serious about applying for scholarships. And let me just point out a few things. You should apply for financial aid in step one. Whether or not you qualify for a Pell Grant or an Oregon Opportunity Grant, many scholarships want you to have applied for FAFSA. So do that um, even if you don't think you, you qualify for any of the free money. And the FAFSA for next year will open sometime in December. We haven't heard that, that uh, date yet. Step two, attend one of our scholarship workshops. I just talked about that. Step three is, is really just giving you a heads up that all scholarship applications will want to see some kind of transcript. Uh, for many of you, that will be your lane transcript, but you might also have to submit a GED or a high school or even prior college transcript. So just a heads up that you might need to access some of those prior transcripts. Step four. Again, if you are going to be at Lane next year, you definitely want to apply for the Lane Foundation Scholarships. There's over a million dollars in money that Lane Community College gives just to Lane students. You're not competing with students across the country. It's just Lane students. So everyone who's going to be at Lane in fall of 2004, uh, this application will open in early January. And they'll have some kind of deadline in early March, but we haven't been told what the exact date is. But we will help you in those workshops uh, complete this application. If by chance, I'm not sure this applies to any of you, you'll be at another college or university next fall, you should be on that college's website to look at their scholarship deadlines. Many of them will be in early January or February as well. In step five, um, if any of you qualify for the Ford Family Foundation scholarships, we'll help you look at that eligibility, but that is a fabulous scholarship, probably one of the most coveted scholarships in the entire state of Oregon. The two scholarships that they have that many Lane students might qualify for is they have one scholarship called the Ford Opportunity Scholarship. You either have to be 25 years of age or older as of their March 1 deadline, or be a parent. And if that fits either one of, if that fits you, you should definitely apply for the Ford Family Scholarship. They also have a Ford Transfer Scholarship. That would be for a student who's at Lane now and is going to be at a university in the fall. I'm not sure that applies to, to any of you, but if it does, you could apply for that scholarship. And then the third application that all Lane students should consider if you're Oregon residents is um, from Oregon State Scholarship Agency, if you will. The acronym of their name is OSAC, and they give $10 million in scholarships every year to Oregon residents. So we will help you complete that application. So in those workshops that I talked about, we'll be looking at the Lane Foundation application, the Ford Family Foundation application, and the OSAC application, and helping you get your uh, materials and personal statements and transcripts and ready to apply. Again, Lane Foundation will open in early January, close in early March. Ford Family Foundation um, will open in on December 1st, 
and their deadline is March 1st. And then OSAC opens November 1st. They open the earliest and then they close April 1st. That's why the next four months is really scholarship season. And then finally, Rick, if I haven't gone on too long, no, I, no. show, I want to show one more thing. Absolutely. If, if you want to look for scholarships that you might be able to apply for right now and maybe receive the money sooner rather than later, um, in step seven, we've got links to what we call our featured scholarships by monthly deadline and our scholarship search site. So this featured scholarships by monthly deadline, we posted September. So these are just highlighted kind of national scholarships that we know about that we think uh, Lane students might be interested in. I know September is drawing to a close, but you can see there are some scholarships that still have open, um, the, the deadlines haven't applied yet. You've got a link to the actual scholarship site. You've got a, a sense of how much money they're giving out and anything we know about the eligibility. So, you know, you're all HIM students, so you're not studying manufacturing. So you would not want to apply for the Nuts and Bolts Foundation scholarship. But look at this one. Find your voice and be heard. $1,500 and you just have to be a legal resident of the U.S. So note that some scholarships are given for very specific types of students and others are wide open for anybody to apply. Here's the list of all the October scholarships. Note that a couple of them are related to health care. So you might want to go in there and see if that might be relevant to you and your study of health information management. And then since September is drawing to a close, Tina will very soon post the November scholarship. So we always have on our website featured scholarships by monthly deadline for the current and the upcoming month. And then finally, where most students spend a lot of their time is in these scholarship search sites. Um, in these national scholarship sites, we have links to what I will call our dozen or so favorite scholarship search engines. These are giant databases where you can register with these sites. You enter in a bunch of information about yourself. You set up an account or a profile, and then they search through their database of thousands and thousands of scholarships and will show you ones that it looks like you might be eligible for. So these are all fast web is popular, scholarships.com. All of these are really popular search engines. And I'm not suggesting you go and register with all 12 of them, but you might pick two or three or four and see what might be available, um, again, from national donors and organizations across the country that you might qualify for. So these national sites, sorry, um, are really popular. And then scholarship sites for students with diverse backgrounds is something I, I urge you to take a look at. This is scholarship databases that are related to ethnic, cultural, family background, LGBTQ students, um, first generation college students. If you fit any of these diverse student groups, you may want to, to look at their sites. Um, you may want to look at scholarship sites for students with disabilities if that applies to you. I don't know if any of you are international students, but you might want to look at that. And if you happen to be an undocumented student, you might want to look at our sites for students in, um, in those different areas. Rick, I see your hand up. Yes, I'm glad you mentioned that. I mean, I think sometimes people think, well, I'm not a person of color or fit something else. You know, they, they kind of look within themselves and say that they're, they wouldn't qualify for this. And I've found people to be mistaken. I know of several people who, in the Midwest who have gotten scholarships to say, go to McAllister or University of Minnesota through the Native Sons and Daughters of Norway, which is a right. big organization there. And uh, I didn't even know they existed, to be very honest, and uh, knew somebody that had over half their tuition and fees paid for at McAllister. So I just right. wanted to mention that. Yeah. You know, I have been doing the scholarship work for over 25 years. I have seen scholarships for red-haired people, <laughs> scholarships for left-handed people, 
Um, there's one in October. If you go back to that featured scholarship sites, it's called the Zombie Apocalypse. <laughs> It's due on Halloween, which is hysterical. that's a good one. And you've got to write an essay about what would happen if zombies took over your school. I mean, that sounds like it wouldn't be legitimate, but it's a legitimate annual scholarship that comes out every year. And I will mention, too, and this is on our website, uh, there are scholarship scams out there. If you ever come across a scholarship, you know, you're out you know, on Google or whatever. Um, and it says, send us 50 bucks and we'll, you know, you can apply for our scholarship. Don't do it. That you should never have to pay money up front for a scholarship. If that seems too good to be true or an organization is asking for money, it's a scam and stay away from it. On our on the sites of those big search engines I showed you, um, they have vetted those scholarships and you should not find any that are scams. But if you're out Googling scholarships, you might come across some sites that you want to stay away from. Never pay money. Very good. So I don't know, Rick, if there's anything else you want me to show on the website. Um, I'll Again, I'll just, you know, go back and just review. We've got the workshops. We've got um, the steps that really have every link you will need. Um, down below, we also have some strategies and tips to be a strong applicant. And then those same links um, of the full list of scholarship sites and those monthly ones are here. And then Tina and my contact information is here too. We're in building one. We're up on the second floor in room 226. Um, we're, you know, here's our hours, here's our phone number. And then we have kind of a funny email, but it fits for us. Show me the money at lanecc.edu if you wanted to email us and set up a you know even a zoom appointment because you don't come to campus we would be happy to do that no beth thank you so much the only other thing i'd like to say yeah. is as somebody who used to hire people for kaiser permanente and other healthcare organizations there is nothing more impressive to a hiring manager than being a scholarship award recipient so eventually students always ask about you know, what do I do to get a leg up when I leave Lane and go into the, the workforce? This is a great way to, um, you know, get a leg up on the competition for those lucrative jobs in healthcare organizations. Yeah. And potentially graduate from Lane um, without a lot of student debt. Um, the last thing I guess I'll share is what what stops students from applying for scholarships often is the time it takes to do it to search for scholarships. I mean, I showed you great resources, but you've got to take the time and find time in your busy schedules. And I know you've got work commitments, school commitments, family commitments, but even if you could craft a half hour a week, an hour a week, if you had it, that was kind of your scholarship time and you sat down at your computer and you went to the website and you looked through the resources that I showed you, or you attended one of our Zoom workshops coming up in the next couple of months, just that small commitment on a regular basis over time, you would be amazed at how much you could get done. Students that are serious about searching for scholarships and plan the time to do the research and the applications. Um, I've got great stories about students graduating debt-free from Lane because they got so much money in scholarships that it covered not only their tuition, uh, costs, but living expenses as well. Terrific. Beth, thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome.